under Earth, Earth. Space Shuttle Atlantis. It is sequential still photographs of the hatch being opened on board. Let's look at those, and I'll try to explain to you what's happening as we look at these pictures coming down from the shuttle. This is a picture taken a few minutes ago as um, one of the members of the shuttle crew, and I don't recognize him upside down. Look, there he is. It's uh, Scott Parazinski. No, it isn't. It's Jim Weatherby, commander of the shuttle, has his hand on the uh, hatch opening lever on the Atlantis side of the shuttle mirror combination. What happened after that was, um, even though we did not see it in full motion video, whether we did uh, turn that handle, open the hatch, and the first thing that he did, just as Jill Doherty predicted for us that he would do, after shaking hands with the commander of the Mir space station, was to hand over that brand new computer that's going to replace the failure-prone computer on Mir. That's what it looks like when the hatch of a space shuttle uh, comes open. You can see the opening up at the top of your screen, and you can see Michael Fole up there um, right at the top of your screen looking through from the Russian side of the shuttle mirror combination. The next uh, moving pictures that we're going to get, well, there you go. You can see um, the uh, crew members going down the orange tunnel. On, um, uh, on the left side of your screen in the red, white, and blue stars and stripes, uh, side of things is um, Shuttle Commander Jim Weatherby who conducted the uh, very successful docking between the two spaceships about about two hours ago now and uh, was uh, made it possible for this uh, hatch opening ceremony to occur right now and um, you can see yep there's another picture and um, this is seen again from the American side the Atlantis side of the shuttle mirror combination um, the um, can't see whose face that is in that picture, but again, it may be Weatherby, uh, because he may well have a computer up in his uh, up in his right hand. Um, the computer parts for the Mir space station aren't. Um, uh, they don't look like a laptop or a desktop computer that you might have on Earth. They look more like uh, old-timey radio parts, as a matter of fact. And uh, those parts are going to be plugged in to the um, Russian space station computer uh, to provide some uh, ground-tested and much less used pieces of computer equipment to keep the mirror on course for the foreseeable future. Uh, the, uh, there was some discussion that these computer parts, now you can see them in the center of your screen, might not have been connected uh, to the Mir space station until after the shuttle had left. But uh, officials in, uh, in Houston, where NASA is headquartered, at least for this mission, and in uh, Karolyev, Russia, where the Russian space agency is headquartered, have indicated we want to put this computer online for Mir while the shuttle is there to provide guidance to both spaceships. At this point, if the Mir computer, the old one, were to fail, it wouldn't matter at all because the shuttle would be in control. The shuttle is keeping Mir on course, keeping Mir's solar panels facing the sun, and uh, providing all the guidance for both spaceships. So, as you can see, one more still photograph from inside the, uh, this is on the Mir side of this, and you can see a docking target there on the left of your screen. The first hugs, Michael Fole is on the right, um, and... Um, uh, Jim Weatherby is on the left. Let's listen in to NASA commentator Rob Navius, who uh, is probably providing commentary on all this. <laughs> well, these are live sounds from space, from astronauts and cosmonauts hugging. You see Wendy Lawrence, who was scheduled to be the mere cosmonaut, but couldn't do it because she was too small, we heard, to fit into a Russian spacesuit. But let's listen in as they celebrate. And uh, oh, while we can't see it live, we can at least hear them. So there you have it. The uh, hatch opening is now complete. The uh, arrival party is underway. Somebody is making movies of this party, and uh, we're going to see those movies probably uh, starting sometime in the next hour. We'll have them for you in a little while. For now, that concludes our uh, live coverage of the Russian uh, space station Mir, U.S. shuttle Atlantis docking and arrival ceremony. We'll have more coming up for you later in the day. Stay with CNN. This is John Holloman. Well, Gene, there are a lot of uh, happy Russian space officials here at Mission Control outside of Moscow. When they opened the hatch, uh, coming through all of the seven Atlantis astronauts, and actually one 
Russian cosmonaut coming through, meeting the uh, Mir crew. They say that uh, they were greeted, at least NASA tells us, that they were greeted in the traditional Russian fashion with bread and salt. And just a few minutes ago, we had a very quick uh, on-the-fly briefing with, from Russian space officials, and they tell us that uh, they plan to change out that computer within two days. They were hoping to be able to do that while both of the vehicles were linked up. They'd have more power, they'd have more control, and that is the crucial thing to get that computer up and running. After all, it had broken down three times in the past three weeks. So they really figure that within a short time, they'll be able to get things pretty much back to normal on the Mir space station. They still, however, have six pretty uh, full days of work. They'll be unloading a lot of equipment, uh, including uh, patches for the damage that occurred back in June when they had uh, a collision between the Progress and the Mir. They have to uh, unload some water, other supplies, and then finally they have to undock. And every procedure has its own dangers. So they said that until that all is completed, about six days from now, they won't consider the mission a success until it's over. But at this point, both the rendezvous, by the way, using a new technique, slightly different uh, technique, and the actual linking and coming through were very, very successful in their eyes. Right now, we're told that the uh, cosmonauts and astronauts are about to uh, go to sleep. They've all been up uh, very late and working hard on this. And also, it's been a different time cycle for the Russian, the Mir crew, which was put on a United States time schedule in order to prepare for this. So they'll uh, say their hellos, give each other some uh, hugs, and then eventually they'll all get some rest. Jean? Jill, Mir has been up there in space a lot longer than anyone anticipated. How far into the future are Russian space officials looking? How, how long do they plan to keep it up and operating? Well, they want to have it uh, up and operating at least in this time before they can get the International Space Station up in about two years. So that was the whole plan that what they wanted to do was continue with the Mir until the International Space Station gets up and going. The uh, uh, U.S. astronauts will continue a lot of scientific ex experiments that they will be performing. There's some very interesting ones, for example, the David Wolf, who is a new U.S. astronaut who will be replacing Michael Fole. He'll be performing more uh, scientific experiments than any of the, uh, the U.S. astronauts have so far. So uh, that, and he'll be up there for about four months. So the, pro the program continues for a little bit, but basically it's to get it uh, until the International Space Station comes online. Jill Doherty at Russian Mission Control. Thanks so much. Investigation. Wolf trades places with American Michael Fole, who's been aboard Mir for four months. Meantime, the process of moving 8,000 pounds of supplies aboard the aging spacecraft is expected to take several days. The space shuttle Atlantis docked with Mir on Saturday.